So we are going to talk about high availability and disaster recovery, uh, how to take care of in MySQL. So I am Ravi Kumar, 26 years of experience in industry, I am Oracle Certified Master and uh, uh, technical reviewer for 5 books and co-author for uh, 6 books and uh, 100 plus articles in uh, Oracle Technology Network. So I work for InfoLab, 14 years of experience for InfoLab in the industry. We will take care of all engineered systems as well as uh, cloud solutions. And we are the one of the partner, uh, first uh, completed MySQL, all the certifications and the Heatwave uh, platform. So next week we are going to release on a uh, book on uh, mastering MySQL administration. We have taken all the experience from uh, uh, customers, from uh, InfoLab customers as well as American Airlines, as well as some of the use cases from Facebook, I mean Meta. So all this experience we have uh, uh, placed into our book. Some of the unique uh, chapters we have written on enterprise backup as well as InnoDB cluster and cluster set and NDB cluster, uh, it's completely use cases uh, worked on in uh, Facebook and also how to monitor MySQL uh, from uh, Oracle Enterprise Manager as well as there is a enterprise monitor from MySQL product. So we have covered uh, completely all the topics either community as well as a cluster based into one book. So it is going to be released in uh, next 10 days. So agenda. So to, today we are going to talk about um, high availability with the cluster as well as cluster set. So it is it depends on completely group replication. So common outages, this is natural. So, uh, most of the things you might have seen. So how to overcome on uh, this MySQL platform using high availability. So this basic replication, we know there are two types of replications. One is binary log based and one is global transaction identifier. And also you have choice to set binary log format, whether it is a statement based or row based or mixed based. And also we know we have two choices, asynchronous and semi-synchronous. And some of the replication topologies, how MySQL will help multiple replicas and from master to different types of replicas, you can see all the topologies. And basically, when we are talking about high availability and disaster recovery, MySQL started with group replication. So you have left hand side, you have one primary, two secondary servers. When something goes wrong for primary server, the automatically one of the secondary will becomes primary. But the disadvantage, I, I will not say disadvantage, the thing is the clients has to reconnect once again because the primary is not available. Now, one of the secondary is primary. So client has to reconnect once again when something goes wrong for primary. So to overcome this, to overcome this, MySQL has introduced, there are two components, shell and router. So with shell and router, you can overcome uh, this disadvantage. So we are going to demo today it's so a short demo, we are taking care of uh, two to three scenarios of failure cases. So we have left hand side primary cluster with uh, three servers, one is primary, two secondary servers with the group replication and right hand side we have DR cluster and again it depends on uh, uh, group, it is based on a group replication, one primary and two secondary machines. So when you do one transaction in the primary server automatically the transaction will go to two secondaries in the primary site and 
three locations of dr so we are going to show some of the scenarios when primary is not available in dr cluster how this primary we are mentioning a systems also my sql my hyphen d how that will become primary so left hand side the primary cluster designed on group replication right hand side group replication this con complete we have made together as a cluster and cluster set so the shell and router will take care of when something goes wrong for your uh, primary servers rerouting the client connections and automatically failure be between the uh, primary cluster and dr cluster will take care of shell and router but in group replication we don't have the choice so because of these two components shell and router in a cluster and cluster set you can overcome the all the scenarios whatever you have seen in the uh, common outages so over to arun so we have uh, two sets we will we will see the scenarios in uh, cluster and cluster set thank you mr ravi good morning everybody uh, happy to be here and uh, we'll quickly uh, go over each one of these components uh, before we get started a quick introduction about myself right um, i have about uh, 15 plus years of experience uh, in the industry uh, i'm currently working as a principal cloud solutions architect at american airlines um, coming in here uh, i wanted to showcase one of the success stories uh, that we had with mysql right back when we were uh, on premise uh, we implemented all of the InnoDB cluster uh, and the cluster set to kind of meet our high availability and disaster recovery uh, scenarios, right? And what we wanted to showcase today is uh, how we can, how easy it is actually to set up uh, the InnoDB cluster and how can we manage and operate with this, right? This has been uh, pretty uh, operationally efficient uh, for us uh, and very easy to manage. Uh, that's one thing we wanted to showcase here as well as part of the demo. Before going in, um, I wanted to quickly uh, talk about the InnoDB cluster component itself. Uh, earlier, like Ravi uh, explained, we have a primary cluster and a DR cluster. The core component of it is the InnoDB cluster itself, right? Within the InnoDB cluster, we have uh, several different uh, components out there wherein all of these key components together are brought in together to kind of uh, give the uh, scalability and high availability that we need, right? And uh, if you're looking at it, the key components are basically the uh, MySQL uh, router, the MySQL shell, depends, all of these replication depends on the group replication itself. And uh, we have the MySQL server as well, right? When we're talking about the group replication, the replication of data from the primary uh, to the DR cluster, and also internally within the InnoDB cluster, all of that is taken care by the group replication itself. And uh, we can dive deep into each one of those concepts. Everything have uh, has a lot, lot of uh, uh, consistency that you can basically get in. And the biggest advantage with group replication is that uh, as and when we are, um, if any of the primary fails, there is automatic member membership management if the cluster is back online again, if the server is back online again, it will automatically join into the cluster uh, as well automatically. And it is fault tolerant and uh, it provides a high consistency and there is automatic conflict uh, resolution built into, the, built into it as well. And in addition, uh, when we talk about the MySQL shell, the MySQL shell itself is a client code editor for us. By default, uh, it uh, goes to the JavaScript, but it, it supports Python as well. And we can even run SQL commands uh, in the MySQL shell to administer and manage uh, the InnoDB cluster operations. And the router, um, it provides all of the transparent client, uh, client connectivity management, right? Wherein we'll be able to, if any of the primary fails, all of the connections that are connected to that primary would automatically get rerouted to the uh, secondary out there as soon as it becomes primary. That's the sort of, uh, uh, from an application standpoint, if you actually look at it, that's the sort of transparent uh, application failover that uh, as an end user uh, experience would look for and uh, the router uh, functionality actually provides it. Not only does the router does uh, the transparent uh, uh, connection failover, it also does 
um, the load balancing of it. You know, it's always aware of which server is uh, loaded from a connection mechanism standpoint. And it also have the customizable options. And if you look at the router configuration file, there are several options we can play around with to meet your uh, enterprise requirements. And we have used uh, these capabilities extensively uh, as well. And one of the uh, most recent feature uh, that we have uh, started leveraging is the transparent uh, read splitting, wherein all of your read queries gets uh, redirected to the secondaries and all of your uh, um, um, read write queries get directed to the uh, primary automatically. And a uh, little bit about uh, the architecture itself, right? Like we said, we needed a minimum of uh, three servers to actually form a replication group. And, um, and it has the uh, ability to automatically reconfigure and uh, reconstitute itself, right? And one of the key points here is, uh, as part of the demo today, you, we are going to see uh, one single mode. It basically operates in two different modes. One is a single primary mode, and the other one is a multi-primary mode. Depending on your application use cases, you could uh, basically uh, configure it. Uh, at least at American Airlines, we did uh, configure the single uh, primary mode, and it's in use as of today. With multi-primary, um, you got to be cautious about and more aware of the your the application data itself on how you wanted to uh, replicate it, and uh, you have to be absolutely sure uh, where your data is uh, with the multi-primary setup. And uh, to basically set up an InnoDB cluster, right? As soon as you set up your uh, configuration file, uh, the cluster admin users, and all of this, it is pretty simple and straightforward just with these set of commands to just uh, create an InnoDB cluster, right? Um, and the very first command in here, the check instance configuration, will tell you whether your cluster configuration that you have right now or your server that you have right now is ready to be part of an InnoDB cluster. It would give you a clear report on what parameter needs to be changed and it even has the option to, it'll ask us whether should I go ahead and change it for you or do you want to change it yourself? That's the level of uh, uh, functionality that is uh, built in. And uh, to be honest, I'm quite amazed by all of the effort that is put in uh, into this uh, making it easy for the customer to implement. And so thanks to the uh, development team, MySQL development teams in here. And uh, with this, um, you know, you could basically add instance with a cluster dot add instance command. Um, you'll uh, showcase some of this as well. And if you look at the status command in here, it's so descriptive in here, wherein you'll actually look at what's in your, what are those servers that are in your InnoDB cluster, you know, what sort of uh, mode it is in, whether it is in a read-write mode or a read-only mode, you could basically, uh, this will give you the, uh, and if you pay attention to the uh, bottom portion of it, the topology mode, that's what it says, the single primary mode, wherein we have uh, uh, configured it. And um, with the, you know, before going in, right, probably the InnoDB, cluster itself, right? The InnoDB cluster kind of provides high availability within your uh, region. And if at all you have a very stable WAN, uh, you can be creative with it, wherein you could put your secondary uh, slightly out as well. Uh, but for that, you would need a uh, stable WAN. And it kind of supports all of the different replication topologies uh, that was showcased uh, uh, earlier, wherein if you wanted to do a read scale out, wherein you wanted to use a replica for some other uh, purposes for your analytical needs or reporting needs, you could get creative uh, with it. And what the InnoDB cluster set uh, does uh, to this existing configuration is, all we are doing is we are creating another InnoDB cluster in a completely different region. This acts as your dear region. For example, and when we looked at the common disasters uh, that could possibly happen, you know, natural disasters, power failures, you know, sometimes you are dependent on some other components too. You know, the database might not, the database layer might not be an issue. Uh, something else could be an issue. Uh, so for all of, to cover all of those scenarios, you need to have something in your DR region. And if you want that to be highly available again, that's where you use the um, InnoDB uh, cluster set as well, right? And uh, having said that, the InnoDB cluster set is also easy to uh, set. It follows a similar mechanism as the InnoDB uh, cluster as well, just with an, a little bit of extra commands that you wanted to use. 
And that's how the uh, cluster set uh, normally looks like. You know, it gives us a, a status of you know how we are. Um, cluster set status is, you know, what, what's your primary and what's your uh, replica uh, set that's out there. And uh, the router, you know, a router, uh, the, the, those are the commands. You basically set up a router uh, admin account uh, that you could possibly use, and you can basically bootstrap it, uh, wherein the router would auto is always aware of everything that's happening within the cluster and the cluster set uh, configuration. Right, and uh, having so, let's uh, go through a quick uh, demo uh, wherein we'll show a couple of scenarios. The very first scenario that we wanted to walk you over is the um, switch over side of things. So here, if we uh, look at it, uh, right, the everything that you're seeing on in the green is actually the primary cluster and everything that you're seeing in the red tabs are the replica cluster, okay? So let's check, um, first let's check if our uh, replication is working as expected, right? So, Hit a show databases to basically look at it. So I'm going to do the same thing on my DR side as well. So we have the exact same set of databases. Just to verify uh, if our replication is working as, uh, as expected, I'm gonna create a sample database. We do see the circular database in here. So this kind of confirms our replication is working as expected. Any change that we're doing on the primary cluster is actually getting replicated to the uh, uh, DR side. Now let's uh, log in to the MySQL shell. I actually set up a cluster admin user called my cluster admin. To check the status, I'm gonna first set a variable. So if you see in here, this is the primary cluster, right? So I named my cluster as the primary cluster, right? And within that I do have three servers, MySQL A, B, and C. And on the MySQL A, if you see, it's in a primary role, and the mode is read-write, wherein all of our queries uh, that are in read-write mode are actually hitting this. And if you see the MySQL B and MySQL C, those are in a secondary mode. And any read queries or analytic queries, you can basically uh, point to that uh, server and kind of uh, retrieve the data from there, or read the data from there. I'm gonna call this variable a DR cluster. Okay, so on the DR side, you know, I call my cluster as DR cluster, okay? And it has three different servers again, everything in 
read-only role because the, the topology, if you recall at the cluster set level, it's actually single primary. So there is only one primary that's always receiving uh, these uh, uh, updates. And if you look at the cluster set status, it says my primary cluster, its role is primary, right? And its uh, global status is okay. And on the, my DR cluster is the replica for my primary cluster and everything is healthy and all clusters are available, okay? And what we are trying to uh, showcase in the demo uh, right now is we are going to do perform a planned maintenance, right? In case we assume uh, on the primary region, there is some maintenance happening and we wanted to basically switch over. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, switch over um, to our DR site. I'm gonna quickly grab the command. If you look at it, it first, uh, as, soon as, they, uh, as soon as we issued the uh, command to make our DR cluster as primary, if you see all of this, it's checking whether the cluster is available, right? If there are any existing transactions uh, or anything that needs to be replicated across, it will look for those. It would basically update the metadata in the backend and all of this uh, happens in the backend for us automatically just with this uh, single command and out there. Right, And now if you see, after the switchover, uh, the primary instance now is MySQLD, which is actually part of my old replica cluster, okay? Yeah, I think that's a quick uh, demo of the switchover in the interest of time. Uh, I know we are close to lunch. So what, what we are going to do is, um, what? so I think uh, to basically summarize, right, I think, our experience with InnoDB cluster and InnoDB cluster set has been quite uh, simple in terms of how easy it is, it is to set up, in terms of uh, maintenance, uh, you know, how are we able to perform it. And all of this is automated for us uh, as well. You know, we do have uh, monitoring scripts running constantly checking for these type of things. And we even implemented the automated uh, failover scripts as well uh, on our end. Overall, from an enterprise standpoint, um, we run a database uh, a service, uh, it's a shared service, meaning we kind of architected our platforms in such a way that everything happens automatically in case of any event. See the high availability and the disaster recovery uh, components of it, the availability side of it is very uh, crucial for an uh, um, enterprise uh, like American Airlines. And um, our partners here, uh, Infolob, have kind of helped us with the initial education side of things and also uh, helped us implement uh, uh, some of it, uh, what we have done here. And uh, thank you for the partnership, uh, Mr. Ravi. And, um, you know, the way it is simplified, the InnoDB cluster and the cluster set, uh, I think kudos to all of the MySQL development team, the support team. We have had amazing support uh, as and when we are doing the development team was very responsive. You know, thanks to uh, each one of the uh, MySQL developers and the product management here. Uh, thank you for listening to us always. And uh, it has been a pleasure uh, being here. Thanks everyone.